Hi, everybody. This is actually just a little addendum to our discussion of symmetries of the equilateral triangle. Uh, in that discussion, uh, I talked about how, and this is explained in the text, there's a way to see symmetries of the triangle as permutations of the vertices. But I wanted to be careful about exactly how that works uh, in order to make it easier to read the textbook. So this is really just a clarification of that point. So Judson has uh, this type of notation, and it's supposed to tell you, uh, it says, it, you should read it as a permutation. It says that A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to A. So this is his way of writing a function from the set ABC to the set ABC. And if you want to know where A goes, it goes to B. If you want to know where B goes, it goes to C. If you want to know where C goes, it goes to A. Now, he uh, uses this as a way to record um, from uh, symmetries of the triangle. And if you look at figure 3.6 in the text, he associates to the symmetry he calls row one, which is a rightward rotation by one step of the triangle, this permutation A, B, B, C, C, A. And I just want to clarify how you reconstruct it. So the, the rule would be, here's the symmetry of the triangle. And it's, a, as I said, a right rotation. So when you do the rotation, A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to A when you turn the triangle one step. How do you construct this? Well, you look at the results of the symmetry, and you ask the top row is, so for instance, this A here is the A here, and you ask, where did A come from? It came from B. Where did B come from? It came from C. Where did C come from? It came from A. There are actually, the, the reason I'm pointing this out is there are different ways of, of doing this depending on how, and this is the particular method that he's using. So let's look at another example. This is a, the reflection around the lower left-hand vertex. And how do we convert this to a permutation? Well, the rule is C came from B, B came from C, and A came from A. So this would be the permutation which is associated to mu1. And one other remark is that this is the same as writing AA, BC, CB. It's the same information. This is just telling you, I mean, the, the input of A gives an output of A, the input of B gives an output of C. You can write this in lots of different ways. So the, um, the order of the columns doesn't matter. Suppose we wanted to go backwards. So suppose we have the, we're given the permutation A, B, C, C, A, B. Well, what is this telling you? It's telling you that you write down the original triangle with the usual labeling A, B, C of the vertices. And now this tells you that a came from C. And that means that the A on the right-hand side is in the position of the C on the left. That way, A came from C. That's how I think of it. B came from A, so the B goes where the A was. And C came from B, so you put the C where the B was. And that's the rule that he's using to go back and forth between permutations and symmetries. Uh, this is important because you might want to do this with other geometric shapes. So just for fun, suppose we had a square. It has four vertices, A, B, C, D. And suppose we were to uh, reflect this square uh, around that axis. So the result of that is that we would have a new square and we'd have B, C, A, D, because we flipped it like that. So if we want to use his method for converting this to a permutation, we have that A came from B, D came from C, B came from A, 
and C came from D. And of course, we could rearrange this if we wanted and write it as A, B, C, D, provided we keep the columns where they belong. And so it would look like that. So um, if you're going to be doing calculations with the table, with the multiplication table, and you just want to make sure you're getting things right, I hope this will be helpful.